And Jesus cannot lie and does not lie. And if Jesus said that and Jesus cannot lie and does not lie, there must be a place called hell. And there's a place called hell where sinners go that die without God. Now God is not going to let one person go to heaven that rejects Jesus Christ, that dies in his sins, he's going to hell. I don't care how good he may be to his family. He may be real popular, may be a great politician, may be quite wealthy, may do a quite, quite a lot in a millerating uh, uh, slum conditions and whatnot, but he's going to hell if he dies without God, don't care who he is. Now Jesus tells us about hell and he knows more about it because he, he, uh, he's the one that built hell and Jesus said more about hell than all the other writers put together. The fact of hell is made sure by the word of God. It's mentioned 31 times in the Old Testament and 22 times in the New. I want to give you seven reasons why you ought not to go there. Now you out in the radio listening audience, some of you sitting out there bleary eyed, went out last night at a party and drank too much and acted a fool and you, you know you don't know God and sitting at home this morning when you ought to be getting right with God to have your family in church. I want you to listen to what this Baptist preacher has to say. It's only the mercy of God that's kept you out of hell this long. I should have been in hell a long time ago, but God's mercy and grace saved me. God saved me by His grace and kept me out of hell. And uh, you should have been in hell a long time ago. If you had your just dues, but God has kept you out and God has given you another chance to get saved. And it may be today if you hear this message and you don't get right with God, you may go to hell. I hope you don't. I said you may. I know you will if you're going without God and refuse to get saved. That's exactly where you're going. And so I want to talk about that today. Seven reasons why you ought not to go to hell. Number one, God does not want you to go to hell. It's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, God doesn't want you to go to hell because He tells you about His love. He so loved the world He gave His Son. He tells you about the son that he gave. He tells you about salvation. He tells you why you ought to be saved. See, God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. But people go to hell anyway over the love of God and the mercy of God. And yet they go on and die without God. God doesn't want you to go to hell. If you go to hell, you can't blame God. If you go to hell, you can't blame anyone but yourself. If you're hearing me preach today... And you die and go to hell, who can you blame? Nobody but yourself. I hope you won't die without God. It's terrible to live in this world and, and fight and struggle and try to get along to make a living and take care of your family. Maybe suffer ill health and then die and go to hell. That's terrible. That's awful. Now, God doesn't want you to go there. It's not His will. Secondly, Christ does not want you to go to hell. Now, Jesus came all the way from heaven, came down to this earth, suffered on this earth, and died that terrible, ignominious death there on Calvary uh, to keep you out of hell. Now, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. And the reason he wants to save that which is lost is to keep them out of hell. He wants them for himself. And Jesus doesn't want you to go to hell. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, And he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. And Christ died for every man. He tasted death for every man. There's not one person that couldn't be saved if he really wants to be saved. If he'll repent and accept Christ, he can be saved. Jesus said, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. God's not going to reject poor lost sinners that want to be saved. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, When you were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. See, Jesus died on Calvary, suffered there on Calvary, and died for the ungodly, died for you, died for me. And so it's not His will that you go to hell. Jesus did all He's going to do. He did enough. He came and did what he did while on the earth. He's now willing to save sinners. And Christ has done all he's going to do to keep people out of hell. 
Now it's up to you as to what you do about it. Jesus suffered, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, he might bring us to God, been put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now Jesus didn't come down here to suffer for nothing. He came down here and suffered to keep sinners out of hell. And if Jesus suffered to keep you out of hell and died to keep you out of hell, then he's done all he's going to do. He tasted death for every man. He was put on the cross between you and hell to keep you out of hell. And Jesus has done all he's going to do. He's not coming back down here and suffer anymore. He's not coming back down here and die again on the cross. He died once and forever. He's not going to die anymore. And Jesus has already done everything he's going to do to keep you out of hell. And if you go to hell, you'll go over or against what God has done for you to keep you out. Oh, you may say, now, Preacher Edwards, I just don't believe in hell. That doesn't change the fact of it. There's a hell anyway. If I went up to New York and told some of the people up there there's a place down here called Athens, Georgia, and they said, I don't believe it. I don't believe there's an Athens, Georgia. You think that would change it? I know there's an Athens, Georgia. Now, some people might come to me and say, Preach Edwards, I don't believe in hell. That doesn't change it. God said it. Christ built it for the devil and his angels, and sinners go there because God can't take them to heaven. That's the best God can do for sinners. He can't take them to heaven. They're going to hell and be tormented down in the flames of hell. Jesus built hell to keep for sinners to go to, and the devil and his angels, why he built it, and sinners go there because they reject Jesus Christ. So the Lord has done all he's going to do to keep people out of hell. This world's in bad shape today. Do you know that? Getting worse all the time. People are drunk and on dope and about half the people that meet on the highway have uh, alcohol in their system. Half of the drivers, the proven fact that half of the drivers that you meet on the highways, they have beer, wine, liquor, dope in their body. Half of them. And it's getting worse all the time. We're living in a terrible, wicked age. And uh, it's getting worse all the time. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a truthist. I'm telling you what God said in the blessed book. And if you read current events and see what's going on, you know I'm telling you the truth. Number three, the Holy Ghost does not want you to go to hell. Now the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, that's the same person. Remember the Godhead, of course. And he doesn't want you to go to hell. The Bible says in John chapter 16 and verse 8, when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Now when Jesus ascended back to heaven, the Holy Spirit came down to take over where he left off. And he came down on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, and he took over. And he's been down here ever since, taken over in the place of Jesus. And it's with him you have to do. He's the one that convicts you of sin. He's the one that shows you your lost condition. He's the one that brings you on the conviction of your sinful life. And he's the one that quickens you and makes you alive in Christ the moment you repent and believe on Jesus Christ, accept him as your Savior. The Holy Spirit does that. And he doesn't want you to go to hell. That's why he's doing that. He, he wants to keep you out of hell. I remember back before I was saved, I went to church a few times as a young man, and the preacher would preach, and they'd give the invitation for sinners to be saved, and I would tremble. And I'd have to hold in the back of the pew, seeming to stand up. Now, what was happening then? It was the Spirit of God convicting me of my lost condition, letting me know I need to be saved. And since that time, I've seen that happen many, many times. I've seen sinners come into the house of God, or come into one of the meetings while I've been in a meeting, or in a, under a tent while a priest, or a tabernacle, or whatnot. I've seen them stand back and tremble as the Spirit of God convicted them of their lost condition. Now it's the Holy Spirit that does it. He doesn't want you to go to hell. But I'm going to warn you. I've seen those sinners come in and almost have to hold to the back of the pew to stand up doing the invitation. And then they'd do that service after service, and then they'd finally get to the place where they could kind of thumb through their songbook while you give them the invitation. 
And they'd finally come to a place where they could talk during the invitation. And they finally come to a place where they could laugh and giggle during the invitation. Now what's happened to that sinner? There was a time whenever he wouldn't do that. Now what's happened to him? The Spirit of God is gradually letting him alone. And the Spirit of God will eventually leave him alone and he'll die and go to hell. It's a dangerous thing to harden your neck against the convicting and pulling and wooing power of the Holy Spirit. Now he's the one that disturbs you. I preached one time under a tent down in Washington, Georgia. Lady came in one night and before service she said, Preacher, I got to have help and and said, I didn't sleep all last night, and I've been crying all day, and said, I was here last night, and you preached, and I knew I should have gotten saved, but I did not, and, and I knew I was lost and going to hell if I didn't get saved, and said, Preacher, I went home, and I didn't sleep a week all night. Now I've been crying all day, and I, I need God. My wife carried her back in the back of the tent and won her to Jesus. Now, why did that woman do that? Uh, who caused her to do that? The Holy Spirit is the Holy Ghost that caused her to do that. It's the Spirit of God that disturbs that sinner that he might get saved. Now you can go on and on and harden your neck and heart against the Spirit of God. He'll eventually tell you goodbye and let you go on to hell. Now there may be some of you right now, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. You better listen to this preacher. The Spirit of God is speaking. Don't you turn that radio off. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. And this may be your last chance to get right with God. Who knows? I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm giving you cold facts. I preached to people who walked out the door that never heard another sermon. I preached to people that walked out the door that died before the sun came up the next morning. I can stand here and name a half a dozen. I know that to be true. Listen to me. When God is speaking to your heart, you better do what God tells you to do. The Holy Spirit is trying to bring you to Christ. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it's pointed to men once to die. And after this, the judgment and the Spirit of God is doing all within His power that you'll let Him do to keep you out of the flames of hell. The Holy Ghost doesn't want you to go to hell. And if you go to hell, you go there against the wooing power and the drawing power of the Holy Spirit of God. Number four, people in heaven do not want you to go to hell. Did it ever occur to you that if you, you have a mother up there in heaven or a father or a loved one or a friend, that they most certainly don't want you to go to hell? I have a precious mother and dad, and I believe they're both in heaven today, and and uh, I have lost loved ones, and they don't want them to go to hell. They want them to get saved. My mother, if she, uh, if some of my brothers or sisters should not go to heaven, uh, she's looking for them to come there, but they won't go there unless they get saved. If I have brothers and sisters lost, and I do have uh, some brothers lost and without God, and I want to see them say, my mother and my dad right now would like for them to get saved. They don't want them to go to hell. And if you have loved ones in heaven, they don't, they don't want you to go to hell. They, they don't want their loved ones to go to hell. Now, people in heaven do not want you to go to hell. Now, in Luke chapter 15, verse 10, Likewise, I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner that repenteth. The Bible didn't say the angels rejoice, said in the presence of those angels. And I believe that it's our loved ones in heaven. When they have a loved one saved down here, that they're informed about that and they rejoice about that. Uh, that's my conviction about that. I, I believe that. And I believe if you have a mother in heaven and you're a lost sinner and she's prayed for you for years and then you got saved, I believe she'll know about it. I really do. I believe she'll shout about it, rejoice about it. People in heaven don't want you to go to hell. If you go to hell today, then you go to hell against the desire and the wishes of people in heaven. And you need to keep that in mind. I know you have loved ones there. I have loved ones there. And they don't uh, lost people to go to hell. They don't tell loved ones to go to hell. They don't want any lost person to go to hell. They're concerned about him. Deeply concerned about it. heaven today is deeply concerned about sinners down here on this earth. But they can't do anything about it up there. Uh, they, uh, they can't do a thing about it. We're the only ones who can do anything about it. 
Somebody said to the preacher one time, said, Preacher, do you want to go to heaven? He said, Yeah, I'm no hurry because I can't win any sinners up there. They're all saved. I want to stay down here and win some sinners to God. And we need to be concerned. No mother in heaven wants you to go to hell. No father in heaven wants you to go to hell. No sister or brother in heaven wants you to go to hell. And you must keep that in mind. And I'll tell you number five, there's people in hell that don't want you to come there. I'm giving you seven reasons why you shouldn't go to hell. People down in hell today are screaming and they're crying, they're begging, they're pleading. They're wanting somebody upon this earth to go and tell their loved ones about Jesus lest they come to the awful place. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16 verse 27, there the, the divies, the rich men in hell, I said, send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify on them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Men in hell are deeply interested in sinners upon the earth, far more than I am, far more than you are. And if God should say to the inmates in hell, I'm going to turn you loose on the earth and let you go back up and win souls, in five minutes' time, there wouldn't be a soul in hell. Every one of them would be up here running up and down these streets, going from house to house, begging people to come to God. People in hell don't want you to come there. Even mothers and dads are down there. They don't want to see their children anymore. They know if they ever see them again, they'd have to see them in hell, and they don't want them to come down there. Now this rich man in Luke chapter 16 said, Go warn my five brothers. He didn't say a thing about his mother. Didn't say a thing about his daddy. There's probably down there in hell with him. Because there were six of those boys and none of them had been touched for God. And if he'd had a mother and daddy right with God, they might at least reach one of them. And they were down there probably screaming along with him. Maybe he pointed his finger at him and said, If you'd have been the right kind of mother and the right kind of daddy, I wouldn't be down here in hell today. And I believe that's happening down there right now. I believe down in hell there's children pointing their fingers, young people pointing their fingers at their mother, at their daddy, and said, if you'd have got right with God and if you'd have done the right thing and lived for God and told me about Jesus, carried me to church, read to me the Bible, I wouldn't be down here. And throughout eternity, they'd be pointing and blaming their parents. Hell's a madhouse. I wouldn't want to be among that crowd. Old Adolf Hitler, Joe Stalin, and all these liberals and infidels down in hell. I heard this morning over the news where there's an Episcopalian priest up north read a big article in the newspaper up there. How the time has come, he said, for us to accept the homosexuals and sex perverse into our church, that we're to love them and bless them and help them and put our blessings upon them. He said, we uh, bless ships and we bless uh, ball, uh, sports and various other things. And he said, time has come for us to bless the homosexuals, the queers, the liberals, uh, the, the lesbians, all that crowd. Time has come that we accept them in and, and, uh, and help them all listen. Evidently, that man's a queer himself. Or he wouldn't make a stupid statement like he knows nothing about the Bible. He's never been called of God. He's not a saved man. And yet he's a priest and probably a, a drunkard and probably a homosexual. If I had to bet, and as betting man, I'd bet every dime I had, and I don't have much, that he's a plain old queer and, and a drunkard. That's right. You're welcome. Well, you like it or not. Man put an article like that in the paper, doesn't know anything about God, doesn't know anything about the Bible, doesn't know anything about common decency, doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. He's on the road to hell, and that's exactly where he'll go, as certain as I'm speaking to you. Now, people in hell don't want you to come down there. The Bible says it in Luke 16, 27, Send him back, let him one my five brethren. Men in hell are interested in revivals. Now, down here, you can have a meeting, and you can get a, about a baker's dozen out for a meeting. Not concerned. Church members say they're saved, love God, and you get about a baker's dozen out for a meeting. Down there in hell, man, they'd like to have an opportunity to go to revival. They're deeply concerned about revivals. They weren't before they died, but they are now. They're concerned about personal work. Oh, they'd like to go out and try to win sinners to God. They're concerned about soul winning. If they just had a chance to win one man to God. Oh, if they could just go and tell one man about Jesus. They're concerned about missions. 
They're concerned about the heathen uh, being lost and need to be saved. They're concerned about the dying in hell. Why, well, you never know or heard tell of a group of people anymore concerned about the things of God, revivals and mission work and person work and praying and, and giving of your tithes and offerings. You'll never find a group anymore concerned about it than that bunch down there in hell. But they didn't do nothing about it. Heaven is concerned. Hell is concerned. And we're the only ones can do anything about it. And we're the least concerned. Is that pitiful? Why are we so little concerned about it? The devil. The devil hinders us. The devil tries to keep us from doing that which we know we should do. The devil hates God, hates the gospel. And he's working now uh, feverishly because he knows his time is short. Number six, hell was not prepared for you sinners. Hell wasn't prepared for me, it wasn't prepared for you. You may be a drunk, you may be a, a dope addict, you may be a, a sex pervert, you may be a robber, a thief, a killer. Hell wasn't prepared for you. When Jesus built hell, he prepared that for the devil and his angels. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, Depart from me, you cursed, and the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, the place of torment and hell fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. God didn't fix that up for, for sinners, but the, God put sinners there. Sinners go there because no other place for them to go. They most certainly can't go to heaven, and God lets them go to hell, sends them right into hell. And in hell they are. It wasn't prepared for them, prepared for the devil and his angels, but they're sent there because they die without Jesus Christ. They know not God. And hell was not prepared for you, so why do you want to go there? But you go there because you make that your choice. You, you reject Jesus Christ, you go on without God. Number seven, hell is an awful place. Now, you don't want to go to a, a terrible place. You've seen on the news the great floods and the fires and various other things, and you just don't care anything about getting into that. An awful place and uh, waters uh, washing out towns and villages and drowning people. And you wouldn't enjoy going there. It's an awful place to be at the present time. Now hell is a far worse place than that. It's an awful place to go to. And for that reason, you shouldn't want to go there. You shouldn't go there. You don't have to go there. But it's an awful place. It's a place of darkness. It's a place of torment. It's a place. It's a madhouse. It's a place of uh, memories, how you could remember when you had a chance to get right with God and didn't. It's a place of weakness. And the Bible said the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And, and so hell is a terrible place. It's a madhouse. It's a place of torment and anguish and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and accusations and living with the scum of the earth, the most wicked people they ever walked in shoe leather are down there. And you want to go and spend an eternity with that crowd? I don't. The greatest people in the world today are God's people, and uh, God's people going to heaven. That's a wonderful place up there. But you go to hell, look at that crowd that you're going to live with forever. There's old Adolf Hitler killed over six million Jews. Old Joe Stalin had millions killed and other wicked, ungodly men and curses, gamblers, drunks and uh, dope addicts and uh, uh, sex perverts and robbers and killers and, and murder. Listen, that's a gang down there that you'll be with forever. Would you want to go down there with that crowd? Oh, you say, preach, I, I wouldn't want to go down there. Well, if you're not saved, that may be exactly where you're going. You may wind up right there. You have no promise of tomorrow, no guarantee that you won't go right there. Right down in the hell. I fear and tremble. Many times I think about it. I didn't get saved till I was 21 years old. It scares me now to think about it. Oh, how many times I've come close to getting killed and, and uh, leaving this world without God. Oh, listen to me. It makes me tremble. And uh, I almost came to place of being killed a few times. All because of sin and ungodliness. And I, I tremble when I think about I'd have gone to hell. I'd have gone to hell if I'd have died without God. Oh, listen. If you're going to do the thing for Jesus to keep sinners out of hell, you ought to do it now. You ought to do it now. Brother Walter Thomaston, one of the greatest fellows I've ever known, gone on to be with the Lord before he left the world. He said, Preach, I, I want to get 
better. I want a witness told me the man he want to go tell about Jesus and want to tell somebody else about Jesus. And, and he said, I want to get better so I can go tell them about Jesus. But he didn't get better. He went on to be with the Lord. He probably told some about Jesus on his sick bed. But he wanted to get out. He had some people in mind. He wanted to go tell about Jesus. Now, if you want to tell somebody about Jesus, you ought to do it now while you're in good health, while you can do it, and try to keep them out of hell. Uh, you'll be so glad you did if you went them to God, and, and they'll thank you in heaven for telling them about Jesus. And you need to tell them about the Lord. Witness to them. People on your job. People in your home. People in your community. Uh, tell them about Jesus. Get them to God. You'd be so glad you did. And they'll thank you for it. Nothing thrills me any more than somebody come to me and say, Preacher Edwards, I just want to tell you a few years ago, I was listening to you preach on the radio, and the God spoke to my heart and I got saved. I said, well, praise God. Amen. That thrills my heart. And people come up and say, Preacher Edwards, got saved in your tent meeting. Got saved in the church while you pass it. Preacher Edwards, I got saved under your ministry. I want to give God the Lord. He does the saving, not me. But if God can use this unworthy servant to reach somebody, it thrills my heart to hear about somebody has been reached through my feeble ministry. And now is the time while you're alive, do something about it. As I said earlier, before we receive the offering, uh, this church belongs to you. You're a member of it. You got your name on the church roll. It don't belong to me. A lot of people around there say, that's Brother Edwards' church. No, it's not more my church than yours. I'm just the pastor and a member of it. And it's your church. And you need to pray for it. You need to try to build it up. You need to support it. It's your church. And you're obligated to do so. And there's lost sinners that God expects us to reach and get them in here. Now let's do our part. I've given you seven reasons why you ought not to go to hell. I have a little clip in here. I clipped out of the, uh, bread, uh, the bread of life, whatever we get uh, comes in here. We have them, the bread down there, whatever you call it. What do you call that thing? Daily bread. That's right, daily bread. You know, I like daily bread, don't you? Not weekly bread, daily bread. Okay. And it tells you here about uh, Pastor A.J. Gordon walking to his Boston church. And there he met a little boy who had a, some birds in a cage. And he saw the little birds in a cage. He said, son, what do you got there? He said, I went out in the field and caught some birds in a cage. And I'm going home to play with them. I'm going to feed them to my cat. He said, sonny boy, I'll give you $2 for them birds. He said, well, if you wouldn't do that, you, you'd be the loser. i just give him the $2 and take the cage and the birds. And the preacher took those birds to church, went out behind the church and opened that cage up. And let them out and they start singing as they lit in the trees and they were so happy they got out of that cage. And he went into the church and he set that cage on his pulpit stand and he told what had happened. And he said, now listen people, that's exactly what God does for you. The devil's got you in a cage and he wants to destroy you. And God wants to let you out of that cage and give you a song. You know, the Israelites had a song when they crossed the Red Sea. Those birds had a song when they were set at liberty, when they got out of the cage. And God will let you out of the cage and give you a song. And you can rejoice. But the devil's got you in a cage. He's going to play with you a while and feed you to his cat, as it were. And you need to let God let you out because he's paid the price and he wants to let you out. Why do you go on without God? Thank you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Precious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come today. Lord, I brought the message you laid on my heart. And Lord, the people you want to hear this message are here in this auditorium and out in the radio listening audience, listening by radio. Now, Lord, I pray that you'll use this message to bring some poor sinner to Jesus. May some soul be kept out of hell because of this message today. Father, even if just one will be kept out of hell as a result. Lord, that's worth the whole world. And I pray now you'll have your way in this invitation in Christ's name. Amen. Debbie, place the stanza. So listen to me. If you're here, you need to get saved. Come back to God. Join the church. Would you come while we wait just a moment? Would you come? If God is speaking, would you come? 